fiber to fabric. Introduction You all know that food, clothing and shelter are the three basic needs of life. You eat food to survive and protect yourself from diseases. You need a house to live in. We wear clothes for protection against climate for modesty and beauty. The material that you use for clothing is called fabric. Take a piece of cloth and pull out a thread. Untwist it to loosen the thread. You will see that it is made up of smaller threads or hair-like strands. Pull out one of these. The single hair-like strand is called a fiber. A fiber is a hair-like strand from which all fabrics are made. Types of fibers. Fibers are classified based on their origin. They are mainly of two types: natural fibers and man-made fibers or synthetic fibers. Natural fibers. These fiber occur in fiber form in nature. Traditionally, natural fiber sources are broken down into animals, plants as minerals. Fibers from plants are mainly referred to as cellulose-based. They may be separated from the plant stalk, stem, leaf or seed. Fibers from animal sources are mainly protein-based fibers. They are harvested from an animal or removed from a cocoon. All natural cellulose and protein-based fibers are obtained in short lengths and are called staple fibers. Silk is a continuous filament fiber. A silk filament is about 1300 meters in length and extremely thin. Animal fiber, silk and wool fiber. Plant fiber, cotton, flax, jute and rami fiber. Man-made fibers. Fibers such as nylon, polyester and rayon are produced by chemical reactions rather than occurring naturally. The term synthetic fiber is often used to designate man-made fiber. These fibers are generally classified by chemical compounds it is made from for example polyethylene fiber polyurethane fiber etc some man made fibers are rayon polyester nylon acrylic cashmilon etc wool wool is an animal fiber obtained from sheep and certain other animals including cashmere wool from kashmir goat's mohair from goats quivit from musk oxen alpaca from camel and angora wool from angora goats the type of wool commonly available in the market is sheep wool the fur or hair on the body of camels and yaks is also used as wool llama and alpaca found in south america also yield wool merino wool obtained from merino sheep is the finest quality of wool how to get wool from sheep Sheep is blessed with an extraordinary trait of yielding blankets of wool over its body. The steps employed for turning fleece to wool fibers and fabric are rearing. Sheep are reared mainly for their wool. They are mainly reared in areas with low rainfall. In India, they are mainly reared in hills of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim. Sheep have a lifespan of about 10 to 12 years they eat grass and leaves reared sheep are also fed on a mixture of pulses corn jowar oil cakes and minerals in winters they are kept indoors and fed on dry fodder leaves and grains shearing once a sheep develops a thick coat of hair it is shaved off for getting fleece the removal of fleece from a sheep is called shearing It can be done manually with a large razor or with a shearing machine. Shearing is usually done twice a year in spring and autumn. Shearing does not hurt the sheep as the process is just like shaving, but still an antiseptic solution is applied so that sheep is free from any skin infection. Scoring: The fleece is moved through tubs filled with soapy water to remove dust, dirt and grease. This process is known as scoring. It is then passed through a series of rollers and dryers to make it dry and useful for next step. The grease obtained in this process is called lanolin is extracted and further used in the production of creams. Dyeing. The natural hair of sheep is white, 
brown or black. It is dyed in different colors. Carding. The wool is untangled with the help of either small hand cards or machines. This is just like combing hair. After carding, the wool becomes softer and also attains the good length. Spinning. In this process, the wool takes the shape of yarn by the use of a spinning wheel. Then, washing and dyeing is done during spinning process using certain oil. The quality of wool varies from one breed of sheep to another. The quality is decided on the basis of thickness, length, shine, strength and colour of the fibre. Uses of wool Wool fabric are heavier and denser than a lot of other fabrics. The wool fabric can be found in many forms. Clothing The main uses of wool is clothing ranging from knitwear such as jackets, sweaters, hats, socks, pants, suits and costumes. Carpets and furniture Carpets which are made from wool are known as being the best quality whilst items in the furniture such as chair covers and table covers etc. Insulator Wool in the wall keeps buildings both warm and damped. Natural wool insulation is used across the world. Sheep rearing Australia accounts for almost 30% of the total world wool production. Sheep farms are spread over a large area covering several hundred square kilometres. One sheep farm may be as much as 200 to 800 kilometres away from the others. A typical sheep farm consists of farmer's house with all modern facilities. Thousands of merino sheep are kept on the farm that feed on natural grasses and bushes. The farmer and his family with the help of trained workers called jakarus ensure that the sheep are herded from one green enclosure to another when the previous one becomes poor in green plants. The farmer also attends to ill health and injuries of the sheep. After the winter season, the sheep are headed towards the farmhouse where the farmer along with other trained people remove the fleece of the sheep by shearing machines. The raw wool is then sorted and packed in bundles like cotton bales before being sent to the woolen mills. Other than Australia, commercial sheep rearing is also done in New Zealand, Argentina, South Africa, Uruguay, China, Ukraine, Estonia and sub-Himalayan region in India. Besides sheep, the fleece of other animals also provides good quality wool such as the Kashmir goats, Angora rabbits, Vicuna, llamas, alpacha, yak and camels. Woolen clothes keep us warm. The wool fibres are crimped, having a number of bends. This increases the air space in the woolen cloth. Air is a bad conductor of heat and therefore when we put on woolen clothes, the air enclosed does not allow our body heat to escape, making us feel warm. Silk Silk is also an animal fibre obtained from silkworms. It is a protein-based natural fibre. The best known silk is obtained from the cocoons of the larvae of the mulberry silkworm reared in captivity. This silk is used for textile manufacturing. The process of production of silk is known as sericulture. The process further consists of many steps. Silkworm The female silk moth lays about 400 to 500 eggs at a time. Tiny caterpillars crawl out. This is the silkworm or larva. The silkworm feeds on leaves and grows. When it is ready to enter the next stage in its life cycle, it first weaves a net to hold itself. It then secretes a fibre made of protein which hardens on exposure to air. This is the silk fibre. It covers itself completely with this fibre to form a cocoon. At this stage, the larva is called a pupa. The pupa grows and changes inside the cocoon. A few months later, the cocoon opens and an adult moth comes out. The silk yarn is obtained from the cocoon of the silkworm. How to get silk from silkworm? Different types of silk with different textures are obtained from different varieties of silk moths. Tassar silk, Muga silk and Kosa silk are three different types of silk produced from cocoons of different varieties of silk moths. 
The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. The silk fiber obtained from this is of very good quality. A female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. These eggs are warmed to a temperature suitable for hatching. This is known as incubation. After hatching, the silkworms are fed on freshly chapped mulberry leaves for 6 weeks. The worms eat mulberry leaves and grow. At the end of this period, they are ready to spin their cocoons. The worms climb on the branches and make their cocoons out of the continuous thread taking about 8 days of process. This is called spinning of the cocoon. About 5500 silkworms are required to produce 1 kg of raw silk. After all the cocoons have been gathered, the initial step in silk manufacture is to kill the insects inside them. Thus, the cocoons are first boiled and treated in ovens, killing the insects by heat. The silk fibre is obtained from the cocoons by a delicate process known as reeling or filature. The cocoons are first heated in boiling water to dissolve the gummy substance that holds the cocoon filament in place. After this heating, the filament from 4 to 8 cocoons are joined and twisted. It is then combined with a number of other similarly twisted filaments to make a thread that is wound on a reel. The resulting thread is called raw silk. It is woven into silk cloth by weavers. Uses of silk Since silk is a soft and smooth fibre, it is woven and processed in many ways. As the strongest natural protein fibre, it is also blended with other fibres to produce more versatile fabric. Pure silk fiber has great absorptivity which makes it appeal item school in the summer and warm in the winter. It is used for making clothes. Raw silk is often used for men's sports coats, women's suits and coats. It is used in curtains and ruffles for pillow and comforters. Silk fiber for home furnishings are best used in rooms that receive less wear as it does not water spot and is not stain resistant. Silk is often blended with other fibres. Synthetic gives silk more stability. Occupational Hazards in Silk Industry Workers in the silk industry often suffer from poor health. When silk cocoons are boiled, foul vapours and gases that are released cause respiratory diseases among the workers who are continuously exposed to these conditions. Workers are also exposed to dipping their hands and feet in water in which cocoons are boiled which causes skin infections such as scabies, eczema and other fungal infections. Also, exposure to harmful fumes, poorly ventilated premises and noisy machines lead to many secondary infections among workers. People working in the wool industry sometimes gets infected by a bacterium called anthrax. It leads to a total blood disease called Sauter's disease.